Vanity Fair published an interesting analysis by Gabriel Sherman where he discusses what a potential DeSantis 2024 campaign would look like. And there's a lot of really interesting elements of this article, but the thing that really stood out to me was DeSantis's true feelings about Donald Trump. And spoiler alert, he is not keen on Donald Trump. Now, we've known for quite some time that Donald Trump is not a huge fan of Ron DeSantis, not necessarily because Ron DeSantis is a bad politician in Trump's eyes per se, but because Ron DeSantis obviously is kind of stepping on Trump's toes. Quote, Trump says, DeSantis is overrated, disloyal, and a know-nothing. And this is what a Trump friend told to Gabriel Sherman. Now, DeSantis hasn't really publicly condemned Donald Trump, but it turns out the feeling is mutual because DeSantis, according to an ex-DeSantis staffer, had some pretty strong words about Donald Trump. Sherman writes, DeSantis in private trashes Trump. Quote, he calls him a TV personality and a moron who has no no business running for presidents, a former DeSantis staffer said. DeSantis tells donors that if he takes on Trump, he would launch a full frontal attack on his record and competence, according to a GOP source briefed on the conversations. Quote, DeSantis says the only way to beat Trump is to attack him head on. He says he would turn to Trump during a debate and say, why didn't you fire Fauci? You said you would build the wall, but there is no wall. Why is that? So that to me is really fascinating because I think that that strategy is the exact strategy that you need when going up against Donald Trump. I don't think that it's a foolproof strategy because Trump's base of support isn't necessarily driven by a base of people who are strictly ideological. This is a cult of personality, so Trump could easily deflect. But the problem here is that Trump is being put on the defensive. Now, the reason why Trump was so effective back in 2015 and 2016 is because he was the outsider. He was basically blasting the records of incumbent Republicans, and that was very effective. But now DeSantis is essentially going to emulate Trump's strategy and use it against him. And I think that if any strategy against Trump in particular is going to work, this is the strategy that's going to work. Now, what matters, I think, is that this comes from DeSantis. If, for example, Jeb Bush tried this strategy I don't necessarily think that that's going to work because he doesn't have the clout and the credibility and the political capital that Ron DeSantis has. DeSantis has spent years proving that he's a Trump loyalist, even if behind the scenes that's all just kind of fake, right? But DeSantis has taken on this mantle of the next Trump in a multitude of ways. He's not necessarily creating a new form of Trumpism rather than he's creating his own path of American urbanism, you know, emulating the Hungarian prime minister. So I think that DeSantis, by creating this whole persona around him, who is really not afraid to own the libs and whatnot, he can perhaps be one of the few people who would successfully be able to institute this strategy against Donald Trump. So I would absolutely love to see DeSantis and Trump in a head-to-head -head debate. They're both terrible, but if these two individuals who are bad politicians and objectively bad people, I think, rip each other apart... That I think is good for the country overall. Now, here's one thing that I have to mention about this article. I absolutely hate the disingenuity because these politicians behind the scenes, they feel one way. And I think that most of us suspected that DeSantis didn't necessarily uh, respect Trump. I think that most of us suspect that most Republicans don't actually respect Trump. I mean, let's be clear here. There are the tried and true Kool-Aid drinkers, the Marjorie Taylor Greens of the world, the Paul Gosars of the world. These individuals, I do believe that they are loyal to Trump in reality, right? Not behind the scenes, talking trash about him like DeSantis. I think they actually do believe what they're selling. But with a lot of Republicans, Ted Cruz, Ron DeSantis, they're so fake. They pretend as if they love Donald Trump, they'll defend him publicly, but behind the scenes, we see what they're saying. And there's something so inherently gross about that. Now, that's not to say that like normal people are always going to be super assertive. I mean, we've all been at these jobs where we want to trash talk our manager, but we don't do that, right? But there's this extra layer of phoniness to politicians that just rubs me the wrong way. The fact that DeSantis feels this strongly about Donald Trump, he thinks he's a moron who shouldn't be running for president. I mean, say that. Why are you withholding your feelings? And we all know that that's kind of a rhetorical question. He's withholding those feelings because he wants to unleash on Trump at the best time. Now, he is kind of walking this fine line where he's trying to cultivate this persona for himself, and the article gets into this. But at the same time, he doesn't want to instigate 
a direct confrontation with Donald Trump ahead of the primary because he knows that that could hurt him. He wants to kind of ambush Donald Trump on a debate stage. So overall, this is really fascinating. I have no love for either of these two goons, but if they're going to rip each other apart, I think that by and large, that's a net positive for the country and for democracy. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.